land. The citizens refused to do so. The siege lasted three years. At the end of it, the entire population, save for a few thousand, were put to death. A deputation of eminent Roman senators then arrived to inspect the work of the army. They then had the ground cursed and sown with salt so that nothing would ever grow there again. Well, I'm now actually in the National Museum of Carthage, and in here they've got the most astonishing array of Roman remains and Roman mosaics, but also, and very excitingly, quite a lot of Punic Carthaginian stuff. Well, Rome really was successful in erasing Carthage from history. I mean, we really don't know that much about them, how they lived, or what they really looked like. And this is why these two scarcography, for me, are probably the most exciting things in the whole museum. They're called the priest and the priestess, and they are definitely Carthaginian. That's what's really exciting for me. These are the faces of Carthaginian people. What's interesting about them is that probably both these things were carved by a Greek artist. And one of the things that really stands out, sort of going around and looking at all these things, is how much that Carthaginians depended upon things from elsewhere or influences from elsewhere. They really were traders. There's very little that actually says Carthaginian and purely Carthaginian. They are marble, and the left-hand one I find particularly interesting, the priestess, because she's got this bird on her head. The beak just peeks over her head there. And then her whole body, the lower half of her body, is actually wrapped in the wings of the bird. But for me, to look into the faces of two Carthaginians is really extraordinary. Over here, we have much more simple and basic Carthaginian headstones. And look at these beautiful small figures carved in relief on these headstones, these funeral steels. Really sweet. All in the Carthaginian sort of position of prayer with their right hand up, all praying, in fact, to their infamous god, Tanit. This really is the most wonderfully light and well laid out museum. It's also not too big, so you can get round it very easily. But having said it's not too big, it is actually full of Roman mosaics and Roman statuary. There's also artists' impressions of what Carthage would have been like under the Romans, and even models showing how it all would have been laid out. But it must be said that the Romans weren't quite as efficient as they would have hoped in erasing everything to do with Carthaginian culture. And there's some wonderful Punic stuff here. Particularly, I like here these um, broken potteries inside this cabinet, which depict the sign of the Carthaginian goddess, Tanit. It's like a small triangle with sort of odd stick-like arms coming out on either side. And it's on funeral pottery, and you'll find it also on their headstones. I'm now in what they call the Tofet, or the Tofet of Salambo. It's essentially a Carthaginian mausoleum. According to history, Salambo was in fact the daughter of the famous Carthaginian leader, Hamilcar Bacha. And the myth is that she committed suicide. Whatever the truth of the matter, the French writer Gustave Flaubert wrote a quite extraordinary historical novel of the same name. Certainly, at the beginning of the 20th century, when excavations were carried out here, a huge number of urns were discovered with ashes and with small milk teeth in them. This 
would seem to lend credence to the claim that this site is where the Carthaginians sacrificed their children to the infamous goddess Tanit. The truth is that in all probability, this was a sacred site for the Carthaginians. It would have been apparently the site of where Queen Alicia sacrificed herself for the future good fortune of the city. Thereafter, the wealthiest and most influential members of Carthaginian society would have had both themselves and their families buried here. But let's face it, infant mortality in those days would have been very, very high. So it would be quite unusual if you didn't find large numbers of the remains of children. The problem for the Carthaginians, of course, is the same as it has always been. Their history was written by those who destroyed them.